like Greg Boone, a guy that you're going to see play quarterback. He's also their fullback. He'll be a blocker. And if you don't watch out, they have some trick plays and he'll become a receiver. We scout you rock, you rock, we roll, we roll, you rock, you rock, we roll, we roll, my block, my block, we roll, we roll, your block, your block, you fold, you fold, if you hot, if you hot, we scout we scout. He's the godfather of Oscar Smith football. My name is Greg Boone, class of 2005, Oscar Smith High School, class of 2009, Virginia Tech Hokies. I started playing football at a young age. Me and my brother, uh, friends around the area, we used to play sideline pop growing up. Those of you who don't know what that is, if you catch the ball, you play football in the street for one, but if you catch the ball on the sideline, you fair game to get hit. Uh, I realized I was a good football player, probably playing rec league, uh, playing in South Norfolk. I played for the Raiders. I can't, I don't remember the age. Played for the Raiders, then I moved to the Cardinals, and after that I went to middle school. But uh, I, I would say my first year I played quarterback. That's when I realized I would be a good athlete. Uh, we was doing tryouts, and the coach asked anybody to throw the ball, and I just stepped forward. I was like, I tried. And ever since then, I was playing quarterback. We couldn't play as sixth graders like they can now. My seventh grade year, it was me. I was one of only two seventh graders to start. I started at uh, cornerback. Middle school was like an early early game for me. Uh, I started cornerback. Um, I ain't really played no offense. I didn't, didn't play offense at all, really. But I would say going into my eighth grade year, that's when everything started getting put together as far as like my skill set, what I could bring to the table, what I could do. Uh, my seventh grade year, all I played was corner. And my eighth grade year, I played quarterback, uh, corner, kicker, and punter. Like, that's when I started coming into my own to realize my talents or what I could bring to the team. Eighth grade year, it was my first time starting quarterback for middle school. But as far as that, I was starting in uh, rec football. Um, <laughs> we had a coach named Coach Lassen, man. He, he was one of the best coaches I ever had. Uh, my eighth, probably... We went undefeated my eighth grade year until we uh, went to the championship game. I don't know. I got a I got a bad habit with championship games. Every time I get in one, I end up losing. So championship games ain't for me. I remember this one game in eighth grade. We was playing. Uh, I want to say it was Crestwood Middle School. Uh, we was all me, Pat Man, DeAndre Vaughn, a guy named Chris. Everybody averaged about two or three touchdowns a game, and that was probably one of the closest games that we had where nobody scored, they two touchdowns a game, so everybody was fussing. And like, we got back to practice that Monday and coach chewed everybody out because we was all fussing about not scoring two touchdowns. It was probably one of the closest games we had the eighth grade year until we lost in the championship game to uh, Hickory Middle School. Ninth grade year, I started out on JV. Um, I want to say we won every game my ninth grade year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, in the ninth grade JV season, I ended up moving up to varsity for the last three games. And I ain't really played much uh, outside of us playing in the river for my uh, my duty at quarterback. The end of my ninth grade year, our coaches had got fired going into my sophomore year. So the end of my ninth grade year, our coaches got fired at the time. Um, we had a principal by the name of Dr. Andreco. She got about five of us returning players to do an interview for a coach. And the first coach who interviewed was Coach Morgan. Uh, Greg Boone, in the last 22 years, top five, top five greatest athlete I've ever been around, whether coaching or playing against, whether it was Virginia or Georgia. Greg Boone's uh, one of the greatest uh, football players I've ever seen. Um, so many great memories come to mind. Um, he's, the, uh, he's the godfather of Oscar Smith uh, football. Oscar Smith football started um, a long time ago, but the success started in 2002, 
three and four when Greg was the leader of the team, the captain and the quarterback. And from what I can recall, uh, she let us interview him. So we asked all the questions. We asked like what we what, what would he bring to the program and everything. And, it, and I think the response that so all of us as far as players of wanting him as a coach was he was going to take us to camp. So coming from my ninth grade year, the varsity finished six and four. That was like one of the best seasons we had ever since probably like the 60s. So uh, after the coaches got fired, we interviewed him. He said he was going to take us to camp. That pretty much sold everybody and the rest is history, man. That was the only coach that we interviewed. Like after that interview, we just straight told Dr. Draco, that's the coach we want to play for. That's the coach that we want here. And she made it happen. So all this wouldn't be possible if it won't for Dr. Draco. I'm not the reason, Dr. Draco the reason why all this is even possible. Uh, camp, we went uh, away for a week to Fort Story in Virginia Beach. Probably worst, one of the worst experiences I ever had. And that's not even, I'm exaggerating on that, but it was, it, it was pretty bad. Cause the first night we got there, it, we got there on a Sunday. And one of the players was like, coach can't make us practice on a Sunday. So we like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So everybody chilling, whatever, lights out like 10 o'clock, I want to say. 12, 12.01 came, coach came in there with trash cans beating them. Y'all ass is mine now. It's, it's Monday, motherfuckers, get y'all ass up. And we was like, Nate, why the fuck would you say that? I want to say he probably had us running outside around the barracks until about two o'clock in the morning. Camp, camp, camp was pretty good, man. I mean, we, we bonded as a team. Uh, we used to always try to get back to the barracks to play cards and everything that we wanted to do as far as fun, he took away from us. So that was pretty much like brung us together together as a unit to basically say, hey man, uh, we here for one mission and one mission only, and that's to build this program. So when we uh, began building the program at Smith in 2002, it was all built around family. Uh, forget about me, I love you, and, and just bringing that tight-knit South Norfolk community together all for one purpose, and, and Greg was kind of the guy that that led that and um, what he means, kids wanted to be Greg Boone. They came to games, places were packed because they wanted to see you know, him on display. So I just think that what he performed and what he did on the field is what led to the next generations of kids wanting to be the next great Oscar Smith player. And then it got to the point where we had six, seven, eight, nine, ten kids that were all considered to be the great Oscar Smith players. And, and that's just kind of how our program grew. It, it had to start with somebody. Um, and it started with him. Soon as Coach Morgan got there, things changed around. We had players start getting the grades and start to play that we knew they could play, but they just never had the grades. So once all that came about, like we was, everybody else was our stat game. I give Coach Morgan credit as far as people getting the grades because my sophomore year, when all of this started, we had mandatory study hall for the first 45 minutes of practice. Everybody, no matter what your GPA was. Um, every week we had weekly progress reports from teachers. So if you missed a class, you was late to a class, you adding up in class, like he made you pay for it. So when he laid that foundation, that set a trend that, hey man, these guys winning now, this is who I want to play for. I think we can make something of this. So a lot more other guys started coming out, getting the grades planned then the program start winning. Then that's when everybody else became our stat game. Um, my, I wanted to my sophomore year it was me and OC Hendricks uh, rotation at quarterback. Um, I was still the starting safety with me and Dexter Manley at the time, but uh, we just played it by ear of who was having the better game. We would stick with that person. If I was having, we would stick with that person. Going into that season, uh, our first game was against Warren High School. Man, we had to go to uh, Newport News to play them. Uh, they had what, like, I wonder, if I'm not mistaken, they had two tall wide receivers that I was uh, put in place to cover one and Dexter Manley was put in place to cover the other because we was the two tallest people on the team. Going into the fourth quarter, it was a tie game with probably like a minute and some chains left. They was driving and we ended up stopping them. So we ended up going to overtime that game and they got the ball first. And coach was like, boom, if if this wide receiver line up outside, I want you to switch with Joe and y'all switch places because you're the tallest person. So he lined up on the outside and I made him switch with me and they threw it up and I caught the interception in the end zone. Oh, and then the very next play, he was like, man, I'm putting it in your hands. We're going 12 draw. 
and I ran it from 10 yards out and scored a uh, game winning touchdown. Um, probably the greatest play I ever saw him make was when a, uh, a player was running with the ball down the sideline for an easy touchdown and Greg not only caught him but took the ball from him and went 80 yards the other way to just completely end the game. Um, and he's just, uh, the, the combination of size, speed, athletic ability, um, I don't think I've seen that um, in a very long time. Um, and I've seen a lot of great players, but Greg is right up there. And like I said, the whole dominance that Oscar Smith started uh, with Greg and then from Greg, from the quarterback play that he he performed for us, then it led into guys like Dexter Merritt, Phillip Sims, um, J.J. Williamson, I mean, the list goes, and then Sean Mitchell. So a lot of great players have come through Oscar Smith, but Greg Boone was the start of, uh, of a lot of that tradition. Going to my, uh, my 10th grade year, we started out 3-0. and That was the first time in Smith history since like the 60s that we started out 10-0. and We was ranked in the top 10 in Southampton Roads. Going to, and going into that fourth game, <clears throat> we was playing Deep Creek High School. Uh, sold out stadium. It was at Deep Creek High School. We end up losing that game 10 to 7. <laughs> we end up losing that game 10 to 7. Uh, I can remember one play from that game, probably one of the saddest plays of my life. Uh, coach called a throwback pass. He put Bobby Ford at running back. Um, I tossed the ball to him to the right, and I rolled out left. Probably no better than about 25 yards around me, front, back, or left to right. And he threw me the perfect spot, and I dropped it, and that's how we lost the game. My relationship with Coach Morgan, man, it was, it was always good until my junior year. My, my junior year, I got, I got big-headed. I wasn't going to no weightlifting. I wasn't going to no conditioning. Me and a couple of my friends were always going to this one neighborhood to get in the pool every day. And uh, when, the, the time that I did decide to come to uh, weightlifting, he, uh, Coach Zanke called me in his office like, Coach Morgan wants you. I was like, all right. So I go in the office. He was like, hey, man, do you want to play quarterback for this team? I was like, no, nah, not really. And if anybody know Coach Morgan, when he get mad, he just, he, he go ahead and lick them lips. And I already knew it was coming. He was like, man, get the fuck out of my office. Your ass off the team. Yeah, he kicked me off the team. And uh, when he kicked me off the team, because I know Pat wanted to talk about that. When he kicked me off the team, I went to my mom. I was like, mom, I think I want to go to Inner River to play football. She was like, boy, you know I ain't transferring your ass nowhere. You, you can stay there. So that was the end of that story. So, yeah, I almost transferred to Inner River. But my mom put a stop to all of that. Oh, uh, she didn't really go into detail. But I know, like, back, back then when we played... It was. It pretty much wasn't no. Okay, well, we can move just for you to play football. We ain't, ain't nobody had no money like that. It was just where you at is, is where you at. You need to play or you not. So I ended up leaving. I probably stayed away for probably about probably about about two weeks. I ended up talking to him. I had to probably run about. Everybody know if you got in trouble with Coach Morgan, in order for you to get back on the team, they gonna vote you on, and then you got to run like 15 miles. I was out there running every day just, and they had somebody tracking the laps every time you do it just to make sure that you get his proper amount in, and I got it done. Uh, first day back after doing that, we had a, a passing league game, and I was at safety, me and Dex. Me and Dex both went for the interception. I went down, he went down lower. His knee hit my arm and boom, broke my arm. That was going like two weeks before the junior my junior year started. I broke my arm. I started the season off with a cast. I played probably about the first five games with a cast on my arm because I couldn't miss no time. I was like that dedicated to it. No, I'm a starting quarterback with a broke arm. Yeah, it was, it was definitely painful. When I when I first broke it, I was at the house because they when I did it, they was like squeeze my hand. I was like squeeze the hand, but I didn't know it was broken until I got home. Mm -hmm. I went to get some water out of the refrigerator and when I picked it up, my whole arm just bent over. After that, I was like, Ma, I gotta go to the hospital. So I went to the hospital, did the x-rays, and there was a hairline fracture in it. And they was like, no sports for like the next month, uh, two months. I was like, no, nah, we can't do that. So I ended up taping my arm and putting a uh, soft pad, like two knee pads over it. And I had to tape it up like that in order to play because they wouldn't let me play with a hard cast on. The team, team was doing great, man. We ended up finishing that season nine and one. We made it to the playoffs for the first time since probably about the 60s. We lost to uh, Western Branch 40 to 39 or 40 to 38 on the last play of the game. 
That was Ryan Pond's senior year. Him and uh, Keon Whitley. Yeah. I was getting recruited. Uh, I was getting recruited going into my junior year. My first offer was from UNC. Pretty much after you get your first offer and teams know you got your first offer, that's when your mailbox is just gonna be flooded. You can get offers from every team around the country just off of one offer. I went, I went to one team camp with uh, a teammate of mine, Matthew Scott. We went to uh, Clemson University. And uh, I, I did I did pretty well there my sophomore year. Going into my junior year, um, UNC was my first offer. Once, once one team offer you, is the domino effect of who's gonna offer you. So after you get that first offer, it's just it's gonna be a landslide of offers coming your way. Man, I was ecstatic about that first offer, man. Like coming from where I'm from, like that that, that first offer was huge. Cause you don't see, especially the school that we're at, we're talking about Oscar Smith, where we was the laughing stock of all football games. Teams before 2005 play against Oscar Smith. They was calling out our plays. They knew what we was run before we did it. We was basically everybody's stat game. My first offer was special to me, but as far as my parents, I don't, especially my mom. My mom, she don't really care about football, so she was like, okay, good job. But as far as my dad, my dad was happy, but it was it was, it was was definitely a great experience because that showed me that I had cho choices to like, I can go here or I can go there. And the more, I, the more I did well, the more offers came. I wouldn't say I was feeling myself, man. I'm, I'm, I'm still a, a mellow, calm dude. So I was just more so trying to get my teammates offers. So certain teams, I don't know how to, well, when I play certain teams, when they're off you, they'll be like, hey, uh, if you come to our, if you commit to us, we'll get this person a scholarship. Or if you come on a visit, we'll get this person a scholarship. So if I got that motion, like UVA said, if I committed them, they would offer my teammate a scholarship. I never committed. I, I never gave UVA a chance after that. But some of the offers that I got, I got, uh, I had UNC, I had Nebraska, I had Florida, Ohio State, uh, Pitt, West Virginia, Miami, um, Penn State. I don't know if I said that. I, the furthest school I had was probably uh, Nebraska. Um, yeah, probably. I got to talk to uh, Joe Paul. Uh, Bobby Bowden, Larry Croker, um, Coach Beamer, of course, Dave Wanstead when he was at Pitt. Majority of my offers were at quarterback. Okay. Um, I did have one offer from Syracuse for D line, which I never played. Um, I don't know how I got an offer for them. I never even talked to nobody on the staff. Um, I had the Norfolk, Hampton State. I just got those offers because they knew I was local. I never talked to nobody on their staff. I guess they, they pretty much knew I won't go in there. I took official visits to Maryland, UNC, West Virginia, and uh, Virginia Tech. Those are my four officials. I had one more. I was supposed to go to Pitt, but I never took that visit. I just didn't feel the need to take that visit. I, I pretty much knew I won't. I didn't want to go to Pitt anymore. So Maryland, when they offered me, they had uh, two back-to-back -back, like 11 win seasons. So they was on the up and up. Mm -hmm. But when I took my visit to Maryland, I just didn't get that home field vibe there. Like I didn't get that, okay, well this is where we want you at. Like I didn't get none of that. Um, I ended up taking a visit to West Virginia. That definitely was not the place for me. Uh, I never seen so much stuff built on hills. So, so I knew that was a downfall. I ended up going to UNC. I loved it at UNC. I just, I felt home, but I didn't feel home. So when I got to my final visit to Virginia Tech, I knew everybody that was there, like all the local players from Deep Creek, Western Branch, and all of that. So that felt more of a comfort level for me. My parents enjoyed the visit, so that was pretty much the selling point. And Coach Steinspring, of course, he recruited the 757 area. I would not tell no recruiting stories. I'm keeping that PG. I would not tell no stories on no recruiting visits. Man, I, I picked Virginia Tech just because of the atmosphere. Like a lot of players were from this area that I could talk to. so. If anybody ever need to go home for a weekend, you always had a ride home or, you know, you just felt that 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 brotherhood, okay, we from the same area. So that's that's what pretty much sold me on that. On National Sign Day, I selected Tech. But I pretty much called all the coaches and told them where I was headed to. Some coaches kept on calling after the fact, which I respect the fact that they want you at their program. But at the end of the day, I was just sold on Virginia Tech. Uh, going into my senior year, man, we uh, coach always let us know the schedule, who the big games are and everything about that nature. But the one thing I hated about Coach Morgan, 
he was, I wouldn't say it was arrogant or cocky. That was just him as a person. But all our big games was always away games. So no matter what team we played, if that was a big game, he wanted to beat them on day stadium. So we never had a sellout game at Oscar Smith just because all our sellout games, we was winning on other people's stadium. Going into our ninth, going into our ninth game of the season, we played uh, Hickory High School. I had a cousin on the team, rest in peace to Cordero. Uh, and they had the Brown twins on the Hickory team also. Um, that game was probably my least favorite game because we ended up going to overtime, which is a team we should have beat by at least 60. Uh, going into the fourth quarter, I was running the ball on the sideline. I got hit in my thigh and pulled my hamstring, like pulled it, pulled it. So I had to uh, end up taping my whole leg up just to finish that game. So the final game was senior night. So I didn't even get to play in our senior night game against Indian River. And that was our rival game. So that pretty much was a setback for me as far as finishing my senior season like I wanted to. So going into the, uh, that was, that was my junior year. Going into my junior year, well, no. That was like in my in our junior year, we played Indian River. And before that, uh, we had a coach named Coach Zanke. He was our little special teams coach. So he was like, man, we gonna work on this onside kick play if we ever need it. And this is how I want you to kick the ball and blah, blah, blah. So every day in practice, I would, I would just screw it up completely. He was like, man, you ever seen the water boy? I was like, yeah, I seen the water boy. Coach, who ain't seen the water boy? He was like, okay, I want you to thank you, Adam Sandler, and just find your bitch. Find your bitch. <laughs> oh yeah, it is my bitch. <laughs> Remember? So I said, all right, coach. So we end up scoring that game, and Coach Zank said, boom, it's time. I want you to do an onside kick. I was like, all right. So I didn't know Pat Man was standing right there at the time. So he was like, just all I could think of my head was just find your bitch. So when I went to kick the ball, the ball hit the ground and just popped up. And all I seen was Pat just run up and just like three people hit him at one time. Boom. And he was out for the game. They had to call the ambulance to come pick him up. Nah, man, that just happened in slow motion. But being the competitors that we are, it ain't no family on the field unless they're on your team. It ain't no friends on the field unless they're on your team. So once we hit in between them lines, it's fair game, man. But after, after the game, I felt bad. I went around his house and seen him and everything. I got the uh, I got the letter from my coach my senior year. Um, I guess back then it was it was well, back then it was the Army All American game. Now you got the uh, Under Armour, you got the Hawaii Bowl. Like it's so much stuff now. But back then, being from the area that we're from, I didn't know nothing about it. So I got the nomination. And uh, I end up turning it down, but normally they only offer like two people from a state, which Victor Harris got it, Eden Lewis had, Eden Lewis got it, and both of them went to Tech, but I was I was the third guy, so I didn't know nothing about it, so I turned it down to take an official visit to West Virginia. So anytime we had a big game, me and Coach always had that talk. Uh, going into that game, I wasn't a hundred percent just from the fact that. I pulled my hamstring like two games before. So I had to tape that up that game and it was extremely cold that day. The infamous play everybody wants to know about. It's in 10 now at the 40 yard line of Oscar and Smith. Harvin, Harvin gets the ball. He's got the first down and more. He's at the 10, five, Look touchdown, lands down in the hands That's how easy it of is. Harvin. And that uh, it was definitely the fourth, it was fourth quarter probably like I want to say like a minute or two minutes or something left on the clock. We had just scored a touchdown, which made it uh, 40 to 39. Lance Town was up by a point. Coach called a time. I was like, hey, y'all want to go for the two or y'all want to kick it? So us as a team, Coach, we're going for two. They're going, for, they're going to go for, uh, go for two. Go for two. So he said, all right, I'm putting in your hands. I said, cool. So we do the quarterback draw. Um, I ran to the right. Me and DVI hit each other, and then somebody else came and helped them out. But other than that, I would have got that two points. Take a second to talk about Greg Boone, one of the best athletes we played against back in my time at Landstown in the uh, Tidewater area. Great athlete, great individual talent. You know, had great arm strength, but could throw the thing all over the yard, but was really um, adept to making people miss. And for such a big guy and super physical, would run through people, was super talented. You know, made a ton of plays and really carried them to Eastern Region Championships against us at Landstown. 
was one of the best players we played and one of the best individuals. You know, he did a great job of leading that group and putting them in a position to be successful back in the early 2000s. But I, I think the X factor they had in that game was when Damian Daniels transferred to Lanstown. So that gave them an extra edge as far as more people who we had to cover. At the end of the day, I, I look at it as everybody put on their jeans the same way I put on my pants. So you 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 a man just like I'm a man. So that's that's how I always win in every game that I play. As, as as far as the recruiting process that I can speak on now, as far as being in that era and now, is more so out of state colleges for players that's in this area. Um, other people might have different experiences, but I'm just going by me. Um, as far as recruiting wise, I would say coaches from different states can sell you a dream because they don't have to recruit this area like that. An uh, in-state school can't sell you a dream because they feel, okay, if I tell this person that he can do blase, blase, and I lie to him, then when he come back home for the summertime or he transfer out, he can say, hey man, this coach promised me this and they lied to me. So that's gonna bring down a trickly fact that, hey, we can't trust this school because they did this to him and blase, blah. A, a out-of-state school can tell you anything and be like, well, we can leave that school alone or that area alone for two years and come back and that everybody didn't forget about it. Being recruited and going to Tech my freshman year, man, I didn't embrace the change at all because a coach will sell you a dream until they get you there. Now, coming from a high school level, being the man and then getting to college and you just an average Joe, like that was hard for me because I'm used to being up here and now you're in college, you down here. So my freshman year was rough for me, man. Like. We had the mandatory breakfast check as a freshman at like 6.30 in the morning. You had to be there or you had to run. Then we had study hall from like seven to eight. Then we had classes throughout the day from like eight something to like 2.30, three o'clock. After that, you had to go straight to weightlifting, all freshmen. Then after weightlifting, you had your team meetings. Then you had practice from like six to, six to eight or something like that. Then after practice, you had uh, your training table, and then you go from study hall from like nine to 11. So I wouldn't get back to my dorm till like 11.30 every day. Unless the first semester came, you got over 3.0, then you could stop half of that because you say you, your life was going in the right direction. Freshman season, man, I read shirt. Okay. Um, I wasn't ready for the college level as a, as a freshman. Some people are, some people ain't. I knew for a fact I wasn't ready just as far as a quarterback aspect, like, you gotta know the line protection. You gotta be able to call the plays. You gotta know what the defense is running. You gotta know what the wide receiver routes. You gotta know everything, and everything is moving at a fast pace. And I definitely was not ready for that fast pace. Red shirt quarterback, we didn't pretty much practice as far as depth chart wise, because they had, uh, at the time we had uh, Blacko, which is Marcus Vick, Sean Glennon, and Corey Hope on the roster. Me and a guy named Ike Whitaker came in in the same class as freshmen. So we was like fourth and fifth on the depth chart or whatever. But them three, Sean and uh, Marcus were getting most of the reps. More so there for practice. Man, my freshman year, man, I tried to transfer. That was probably the worst experience ever as a freshman, just from going from being the man to not being the man. So I wasn't used to that experience. So I tried, I tried, I, I tried to transfer to uh, UNC, but I, I would end up getting talked out of it. Just how, just the freshman year was just rough, man. Just as far as classes, study hall, breakfast check, like that was on a daily grind, like Monday through Friday, man. So you getting up at like six, six o'clock, having to be breakfast check at 6.30 every day and not getting back to your room like 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night, man, that, that just pretty much wore me down. Uh, going into my red shirt freshman year, uh, I want to say the summertime, Coach Stein Spring came to me and was like, hey man, we got uh, Marcus and Sean still on the roster. You probably won't get no playing time and such and such. Would you like to switch positions? And being me from not playing my freshman year, man, I'm like, man, I'm trying to get on field anywhere I can fit in. So he was like, well, how about tight end? So I was like, I ain't never played tight end. I ain't put my hand on the ground, none of that. So I was like, sure, I tried. I was like, I only got one stipulation. I got to keep my number eight. He was like, that's no problem. You still keep number eight. So going into that year, uh, yeah, Marcus ended up getting in trouble and he ended up getting kicked off the team. So all we had was Sean, Glennon, and Corey Holt on the team. And they came back to him and was like, hey, you want to switch back? 
I was like, nah, I'm pretty much like solidified. I know I'm a, I can start right here as a redshirt freshman and get playing time. So I'm gonna just stick with tight end. So that's when I just pretty much gave up the quarterback and just made a full-time move to tight end. For me at the time, it was the right decision. Um, I look at it as far as I could have moved back to quarterback because playing the tight end position, you gotta know pretty much the whole blocking scheme. You gotta know what the uh, what receiver routes are running against, if it's zone or man. So once playing that position, I pretty much knew everything that the quarterback knew. So if I would have needed to switch back, I could have switched back. Cause you gotta you gotta think you you line up on the outside as a wide receiver, and then the different formations that they playing zone or man, everybody route is in sync to what the defense is playing. So and then playing tight end, you in a rain game, so you gotta know the blocking scheme. Mm -hmm. So as far as that, everything that the quarterback know tight end, you know. My red shirt freshman year at tight end, I wouldn't say I was happy just because we had <laughs> we had Coach Steinspring as our coach. Oh, okay. He was the guy that recruited me and he would always just like, he would always get on us every day, me and Sam Willer. He would just constantly stay on our case because we wasn't learning everything how they wanted us to learn it. Like we put in a game plan, we'll mess up here in practice, but in game time, we'll get it right. So that whole season was pretty much a learning curve for me and him. Sophomore, uh, redshirt sophomore year definitely ended on a sour note because we was playing uh, Georgia in the bowl game, Chick-fil-A bowl. They had uh, No Sean Marino and uh, Matt Stafford at quarterback. That was his freshman year. Uh, we was winning that game until like the fourth quarter where they kicked the onside kick and got the ball back and ended up winning that game. But we ended up losing that bowl game, so that was a, a sour note for us as a whole. Getting ready for the redshirt sophomore year, man. Uh, we had spring ball. I did great in spring ball. I won, this, I won uh, MVP of the spring ball that year as far as offensive player. Um, that was a learning experience for me because the coach couldn't tell me that no more. Like, it, it would be times where he'd come into the meeting just for him picking on us so much our freshman year that, that this this year was our get back mode for him. So, Stein Spring, I know you probably gonna watch this, but. Uh, he used to dip a lot. So we'll take like some uh, gator lights and put it in his dip. So when he shake it up, it'd be a nasty taste in his mouth. We used to take like the little water bottle and just spray it on the little chalkboard. So when he go to write, it'll mess it up. We'll unplug the mouse from him. He always be like, man, I don't know what the hell's going on. But he never knew it was us. But that was just our get back for him messing with us so much our freshman year. Nah, this, this definitely be his first time hearing about it, but he'd be all right. At that, at that point, man, I, I was I was definitely happy because we was winning. So uh, we never had a losing season my whole time there. We won at least 10, 11 games every year. So by the time my senior year came, we was probably one of the winningest programs in tech history as far as freshman year to senior year as far as win-wise. I wasn't thinking about NFL at that time, um, especially because I didn't have enough film enough tape to even put in for the NFL at that time. Red shirt junior year was probably my best year as a college athlete. Um, I played quarterback that year. I played running back that year. I played tight end that year. I played wide receiver that year. So I was pretty much moved around in so many different spots that year that that was probably my best year as a college athlete. Just trying different stuff out. Um, we had the wild turkey package for me where I go to quarterback. Boone now in what they call the wild turkey. And he fakes a handoff, and the big fellow will keep it himself. And he's rumbling inside the 35. Had run plays, pass plays in it. Um, plays where I would go to running back and stuff like that. Uh, we, was, we was winning games. I, I want to say we lost probably two games that year, end up going to the Orange Bowl. He goes Fiesta Bowl, Ohio State and Texas, and back here for the national championship a week from tonight. The big tight end, Greg Boone, lumbering and carrying tacklers along with him. The starting tight end for Virginia Tech, it doesn't matter. They're already in a two tight end formation. He's that big. This a guy. We played Cincinnati in Orange Bowl my junior year. And my sophomore year, we played uh, Kansas and lost that game. Going into my senior year, man, I, I was like, this going to be my year. I'm going to get more touches and hopefully everything go my way. Uh, we played Alabama my senior year, first game of the season in Atlanta for the uh, Chick fil A Bowl kickoff. Um, I want to say second quarter, we throw a pass to our running back up the sideline. I run up the field and throw a block and uh, broke my collarbone. 
So I missed like the next two or three games after that. And after that, I had to get a shot just to play. Don't get a shot. Don't get it. Because it's, it's, it's going to numb the pain for you. But when that medicine wear off, you're going to feel every bit of it. Sometimes I still feel it, but I ain't finished that game. Yeah, fight injury pretty much my whole senior year just from that one hit. We, we end up making it to the uh, Chick-fil-A Bowl against Tennessee. And we end up beating Tennessee by like, I want to say about like 20 points. First quarter of that game, we're on a punt. I'm on the punt team. I run down the field and pull my hamstring. So I had to go in the locker room just because it was my last game. I was like, man, I need a shot. So they gave me the little cortisone shot in my thigh, and I come back and end up finishing that game. Wrapping up the senior season, man, the next thing I was thinking about was just trying to find an agent. Trying to find an agent, man, you gotta, you gotta figure out what's best for you, like what you want out of, like what can this person bring to the table as far as who, who are their clients? Like what what do they do? Because at that point, um, I think agent fees was like 2%. So that, that pretty much wasn't a big deal, but you gotta just figure out What's best for your situation? Who, what agency you want to go with? Oh, uh, I made that decision for myself just as far as how comfortable I felt with this person and that pretty much that way. My senior year wasn't my best year, so I didn't get invited to the combine. Um, I ended up picking an agent by the name of Jason Swango. He was a local guy from here, so I felt like there was a connection with that. So I ended up going with him. Um, I went to... Uh, Minnesota and Miami for a pre-draft visit. Um, I didn't get drafted. I signed as a free agent with Tampa Bay and uh, that's when all my medical history came up. You gotta go to every doctor and they do all their tests or whatever. Then they came back and said I had some heart problems. So that pretty much ended my whole dream of playing at the next level. Graduated in sociology. Yeah, we had a pro day at Tech. First, you did the pre-draft, okay. so you you would visit team. Then I went to visit uh, Minnesota, Miami. I never met with Tampa Bay. Just uh, ended up signing with them after the draft as a free agent. Looking at the facilities now from when I was at Tech and the facilities they have now, like our our facility wise, it was like all we had was like, especially for like the players lounge. We had one computer, we had a pool table and like a PlayStation. Like that was, and probably like three couches that Everybody used it as a bed because they was tired from like practice and stuff. But other than that, like then going to a professional team where they have like the nutritionists, they had the bars, they have uh, anything you think of for a hot tub, jacuzzis, cold tubs, like they had everything. Sure. Man, I was I was beat, man, because I'm like, man, I played football my whole life. Like to hear some news like that is like it was it was heartbreaking. So I ended up coming home. I end up going uh, get more tests done. I was on meds for like a year and I tried to get back into it. I played arena ball for a year, but after that, I, you like pretty much blackballed at that point because teams already know your medical history. So they're not willing to take that risk on you. Uh, Milwaukee Mustangs. Yeah, it was a good experience. I don't really say I can give nobody no, no advice, man, because everybody's journey is going to be different. You just got to take it and describe how, how you want your journey to play out. You want to play out on the good side, that means you got to do what you need to do. You want to play on the bad side, that means you can pretty much going to let outside influences affect your goal. See, most people will want that to be good, mm -hmm. but are you willing to put in that work? That's what's gonna separate this person from this person. For me, I seen people that, as far as college wise, they would be like a top three person in the nation at a position. When they get to college, I'm like, man, I, I had a guy in high school that's way better than him. Like, how does he get this offer, but he don't get this offer? So there is, is a difference because now you're going by size and pretty much, okay, well, he might can do that. So when I got to college, it was like, okay, this guy's 6'8", 320, but a butterfly can push him over. I had a guy that's like 5'11", 280, nah, he's too short. That was another thing with Coach Morgan. We would have college coaches come and visit or call. Hey, be like, hey, I got such and such on the phone for you. You 6'1 or you 6'2. They were like, Coach, but I ain't see you 6'1 or you 6'2. So, okay, so as long as you get that offer, then hey, you can accept it because that's their fault that they didn't come visit you. So he would like, no matter who it was, like he got you in touch with somebody. I would probably say, uh, going into my senior year, I was getting so much mail that I had to get my own mailbox in the school. So I was probably the first and 
I probably won't say the last name because the athletes they got there now, but I was definitely the first to have my own mailbox in that in the school. I was getting that much letter. Uh, it was times where I would go check a mailbox and it'd be like, not even letters from school, just from girls. That'd be like, hey, such and such, such and such. Like, at that point, I, I was like, oh man, like that's crazy. So coming up, coach was like, man, I don't want you to get big headed. You can't have no girlfriend. I'm like, well, I can't have no girlfriend because I don't want you to lose sight of your focus. So I didn't, I didn't end up getting a girlfriend until the end of my senior year. Probably one of the toughest players that was I ever played with on my team was this girl named Keyshawa Hoodie. So we had this girl on the team named Keyshawa Hoodie. Uh, I want to say that was my sophomore year. We went to camp that year. And uh, Dr. Draco had to come to camp also because she was the only female. So they had to stay in the dorm, the barracks together. Um, we would be in practice like on her period and everything else. Like she never missed a practice. She never missed a game. Like half the time she would get in in the game before some of the guys would get in just because of her work ethic. And people didn't know she was a girl until she took her hammer off at the end of the game. Um, I remember moments in practice where we would run drills and I, I felt bad about it now, but I was like, man, I can't play with no girl on my team, man. So they would throw her the ball. I'm talking about like, we would just straight smack her. She'd eh, get up, she'd be like, hit me harder next time. So right then and there, like that's when she earned all the respect in the world for me, man. She played wide receiver and cornerback. Nah, she wasn't big of a person, but man, like everything that we did, she did. Like she didn't miss a beat. No, I haven't seen Hoodie since since high school, man. I want to say she joined the military. Oh. It's crazy because she ended up finishing out, but her brother ended up quitting. Nah, man, she was she was probably might be five two, man. And oh, she was small. Yeah. No, nah, she was small. She was like five two and small. And she played like she probably played in four four or five out of ten games. Offense, wide receiver, and cornerback. He's almost tagged in the backfield, he's able to step around it. He hits his one foot, who's going to take the snap. He wants to pass, and he airs this snap. Look at that beautiful tight end next to the running back. He's going to keep it himself. He uses Christ, he's cooking the blocker, but goes out to the floor. Oh, my goodness. He gets the first out of more And I'll tell you what, Greg Boone is a stud. He opens up. Noah Baker, but Boone evades that tackle. He picks up, he's at the 50, of the 40. And see, that's not even fair. We scout you, you rock, you rock, we roll, we roll, you rock, you rock, we roll, we roll, my block, my block.